Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India Limited Q1 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is been recorded. I now end the conference over to Mr. Manoj Bhat, MD and CEO. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you. Good evening everyone and uh, a very warm welcome to our Q1 call. Uh, I think uh, as as we go into the call today, I am Mr. Vimal Agarwal, our CFO, uh, and other members of our management team are available for any questions if, if uh, needed. Uh, obviously, you can find our quarterly results and investor presentation on on our website and also on the stock exchanges. I'm assuming some of you have gone through it. I'm going to touch upon a few highlights, uh, and then Vimal is going to talk briefly about the numbers, and then we'll throw it open for questions. Uh, firstly, I think uh, a little bit about the environment. Uh, the industry environment continues to remain healthy. I think, although it's down from the peak, I think the last two or three months, I think we have seen some. Uh, weakness coming through in the industry, but however, ADRs are still growing. I think over a year-on-year -year period, it's about plus three percent at an industry level, with a 6,900 per room ADR, and occupancy is stabilized at around 60 percent in May 24. Uh, if I look at the other proxy, which is passenger traffic uh, in the domestic market, I think grew by six percent YOY in June, and it's finally surpassed the pre-pandemic. Levels uh, by 10.4 percent. So, so overall, I think the overall environment continues to remain positive. Uh, coming to our performance, uh, our performance has been robust. Uh, I think our profits grew by 19 percent uh, uh, to 45 crores, and margins expanded by 110 bips in our standalone numbers. Uh, this is obviously a, a reflection of. Uh, the various measures we've been taking, uh, both from a historical uh, addition perspective, as well as the various initiatives we have taken. If I look at the other metric around member additions, uh, uh, I think we continue to add members. Uh, I think we added about 3,700, rather 3,692 members, and crossed a milestone of 3 lakh membership count uh, in in the quarter. Uh, the highlight is uh, really that. Uh, There was a big focus on higher realization, and so our average AUR or average unit realization is up by 31% YOY to 4.9 lakhs. Uh, I think uh, the other thing is that this 3,692 is a decline from the previous uh, additions in the uh, pre uh, same quarter previous year, uh, and I think the reason is that we are focused on higher AUR. I think that. meant uh, some product variant rationalization some optimization of offers and i think some of the enhancements we have done in terms of our lead management processes i think this journey has just started and i think this focus will continue as we go forward because i think ultimately the we are trying to find the right product mix uh, which has a balance of tenure as a balance of down payment And a balance of uh, the right product mix for the right uh, customer segments. Uh, I think from our perspective, the focus is to deliver superior service across touch points, and this, uh, in in a way, is leading to this consistent growth in membership upgrades. Also, because we are seeing upgrades also go at a reasonable pace. If coming to resorts and inventory, uh, I think our uh, resort occupancy was stable at 90%. mind you this is uh, uh, on a higher inventory base compared to what it was last year about we added about net 268 keys so including that i think we have been able to maintain occupancy which kind of talks to the demand pattern and and the kind of uh, uh, customer response we are seeing as we continue to add inventory uh, the goal of reaching 10k rooms by fy30 i think that's what we had articulated Uh, from our perspective we are well on track uh, while some of you might look at the q1 number as a negative number but that's a slippage of a quarter uh, i think on a full year basis we are on track and overall on a five year basis we are on track 
to hit the 10k number by FY30. The approach for this will be obviously uh, uh, consistent with what we have been doing right now, which is we will build quality greenfield resorts in certain locations uh, and also have a combination of capitalized strategies where in other locations where we partner with other people who would be investing while we would be taking on the responsibility of operating and managing uh, customer service in those locations. So that's that's really the strategy going forward also. And I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, I think we are continuing to see a lot of interest uh, from uh, in, inward funnel in terms of uh, asking us to partner with uh, with these uh, with them as well as uh, in terms of uh, potential areas where we could get greenfield development. From a, uh, uh, the main routes which we have spoken about in the past is of course uh, existing land banks and new land parcels where we'll build greenfield, uh, expansion of our existing resorts, acquisition of resorts, and then of course build to suit and leases. I think these are the five main ways we are doing this. Uh, I think uh, one of the questions I get often is about how do we fund this? Uh, currently, we have a cash balance of about 14.37 crores, and we continue to generate cash consistently year on year. So initially, of course, the first first order of business would be to use this internal capital to fund the capex needs as we go towards the 10,000 room target, uh, and that's something which uh, uh, eventually, then finally, if if we do reach a situation where that is not sufficient, maybe we would look at debt as an option. Uh, in the current quarter, again, uh, we commenced a new expansion project uh, of 54 keys uh, in, in Treehouse Jaipur. As you know, it's an existing resort, so it's uh, something we are adding to uh, given the customer demand there. Our three ongoing uh, projects uh, in, in terms of greenfield and expansion is there are Ganpati Pule in Maharashtra and Thiyog in HP. I think uh, that's going on track as well as the expansion in Kandaghat. Uh, and so to me, I think uh, good progress on all of that. The last bit I want to highlight is uh, we are working with various governments to uh, partner with them in terms of developing PPP opportunities. As you know, it's a core area for uh, overall the Indian economy. It's been highlighted by various uh, uh, leaders of various states as well as from the center in terms of how this could be a real growth area for India in the future, and as we want to be part of it through these PPP initiatives. Uh, ESG, I think uh, our big focus on ESG continues, and our target of carbon neutrality by 2040 through EP100, RE100, and science-based targets is something we are journeying towards on a continuous basis. Uh, in, in a quick update, uh, we had six new resorts became net zero to waste to landfill in Q1. Uh, we had uh, about uh, 10, 10 new uh, green resorts which are platinum certified, which happened in Q, Q1. Uh, we have increased our solar capacity. Now it's 28% of our total energy demand. This, of course, makes sense from a sustainability perspective, but also is a huge driver for cost efficiency as we come more and more online on this. And two of our resorts are net water positive. And in fact, one of our resorts is India's first net zero certified in all three categories, net zero waste, energy, and water. Quickly commenting on our European subsidiary HCR. As you know, last year, HCR had gone through a, a series of uh, uh, setbacks in terms of its performance. Uh, I'm happy to say that the situation is stabilizing. Uh, in fact, revenue from timeshare grew 34% year on year. However, I think overall, uh, given the Finnish economy constraints as well as uh, the impact of the Russia war, we saw some uh, reductions in, in resort spending. I think the focus is to improve uh, operating metrics there, and that's something which we'll continue to do uh, in the future. The other comment I want to highlight is, of course, Q1 is the, one of the weakest quarters for uh, HCRO, and I think Q2 becomes a much stronger quarter. So I think going into next quarter, I think we'll, we'll understand more about that business, and, uh, and I, I'm very confident that 
uh, on a full year basis, we will see a better year for APRO. Uh, to conclude, I think uh, the opportunity still exists. There's a huge growth in the economy. There's a change in customer behavior. There is a huge propensity to spend on travel. Uh, there's backing from the government. Uh, the government in the recent budget also uh, undertook a, a, a pledge to an enhance comprehensive development of cultural landmarks as well as uh, trying to establish India as a global tourist destination. Connectivity is improving and I think all of us are reading about it every day, I think, uh, and that's really helping uh, some of these trends uh, evolve much faster. And lastly, supply, I think uh, while there are uh, 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 a lot of demand in certain segments, including the segment we operate in, which is uh, uh, resorts, uh, I think there is not enough supply and that situation is not going to correct itself soon. So I think there's a huge potential to serve this underserved market and that's where I think uh, from an overall perspective, I believe we are well positioned and uh, to take advantage of the full potential. With this, I'll handle, uh, hand it over to uh, Vimal Agarwal, our CFO, to quickly take you through some key financial numbers and then we'll throw it open for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj. I'll first cover the standalone financial highlights and then follow that up with consolidated financial highlights. So far as standalone is concerned, our total income was at 384 crores, which is up 8% year on year basis, uh, whereas resort income was 94 crores for Mahindra holidays. Uh, EBITDA was at 113 crores, which is up 17% year on year. and our EBITDA margin also expanded by 220 BIPs to 29.5%. Profit after tax was at 45 crores, which is up 19%, and our margin was at 11.8%, which is again 110 BIPs up year on year. Deferred revenue after adding about 60 crores is at 5655 crores. Our cash position also improved to 1437 crores, and as of now we are generating an yield of about 7.73% per annum. Moving on to consolidated financial highlights, our total income was at 686 crores, which is up 5% year on year basis. EBITDA is 139 crores, up 14%, and EBITDA margin is 20.2%, up 160 basis points year on year. Overall PAT, which was at consolidated level post absorbing for depreciation, amortization, and interest was at about one crore, and this year, quarter one, we are at six crores. These are the key financial matrices. I'll request if you can open the floor for questions from the investors. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Pankaj Kumar from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, so my first question is pertaining to the membership additions uh, in this quarter that we have seen uh, declined around 21% YOY basis. Uh, as you stated that the focus is clearly on the high AUR. So is this the strategy that we are going to follow going ahead? And in that scenario, how do you see the total membership addition for the year? So thank you for the question, Pankaj. Uh, I think the way I would think of it is uh, as we looked at uh, uh, reshaping this, I think clearly one of the first things we looked at is some of the plans which have uh, uh, been uh, really contributing to the lower AURs. Uh, combined it with, as I said, some of the metrics around down payment, and also combined it with, uh, I think, uh, some of the offers we were offering with some of these plans. And I think we actually pruned out quite a few of these offers during the course of the quarter. Uh, I think that obviously is, is a change, which uh, in, in some cases, uh, obviously brought the impact down, uh, impacts on member additions. So so uh, the way we are seeing is I think I would see Q2 as a 
quarter where this kind of stabilizes uh, while we keep the focus on higher AUR because ultimately I think uh, uh, the way I would look at it is there is member addition, there is a quality of revenue metric around AUR and then there is a total sales number. So if I look at the first one which is member addition, you are right, it was down about 21%. If I look at the other one, it's about 31% up. If you look at the third one, it's about 4% up, which is the total sale. So I think we will have to balance between the two. Uh, my own sense is that uh, uh, I think uh, we, we still don't have a full picture of the year, because. but I think we would try and see how do we get close to the member addition number which we saw in next year and then build from there. At this point, I don't have a, a, a number for you from a full year perspective. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, sir. Uh, sir, my second question pertains to the room at inventory additions plan. Of course, we have laid out the long-term goal of 10,000 inventory. Uh, so if you can give us some sense like how it is going to ramp up over, the, say, next five to six years. So you see more of a front loaded or back loaded, if you can give us some sense, because that will give us some sense on the membership additions as well. So for the year, for this year as well, for next two years, like how do you see the uh, room addition going? So, so I think very simplistically, uh, uh, I think if, if you look at 5,000 five years, that's 1,000 per year. I, I think the initial two years, obviously, I think it will be lower uh, and it will catch up in the next, next three years. That's the current way we are envisioning it. Uh, so from a perspective of current year, I think, uh, as I mentioned, while the Q1 number, and this is obviously not to be measured quarterly, I think it is, it is a longer period of time because, uh, as you know, projects are projects, uh, and uh, a month here, a month there is always possible. But uh, as I look at the full year, uh, I do believe that uh, we will uh, definitely exceed last year's edition uh, on, a, on a net basis. And when I say net, what it means is one of the things we are doing also as part of this exercise is looking at our room inventory and looking at uh, member feedback on the rooms and using this opportunity to also uh, prune certain rooms or terminate certain arrangements which we have uh, with our partners. So I think I, all the numbers I'm talking is net. So I think we will, we will do better than last year. And I think, as I mentioned, uh, uh, my own sense is that uh, we will we will look at uh, a much higher number compared to last year in terms of a net number. And so my third and last question is on uh, the growth uh, that strategy that you said it will be through greenfield, brownfield, as well as the inorganic. So in the current scenario, when there is a supply constraint, uh, how do you see the options? available from the inorganic growth perspective? Are we just getting uh, opportunities in that side and any uh, near-term opportunities in that? Uh, so inorganic uh, in the current environment, you're right. I think uh, it's probably not a very realistic option. Uh, however, I think uh, uh, my it is an option which we keep open because see from our perspective, as we look at inorganic, what we would bring to the table is an ability to leverage our 300,000 member base, and that's the synergy which we can uniquely bring to many of the many of the prospects. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, we would be evaluating right now. There are none. I I want to clarify. Uh, uh, secondly, I think uh, uh, from a perspective of uh, uh, a broader picture, I think. Uh, these are opportunities which uh, obviously evolve during special circumstances, uh, which I think, as you correctly said, maybe it's not the right uh, time frame. So that's something we'll be open to. Uh, but as of now, it, as I said, it, it was for completeness that I mentioned it, but there's nothing active at this point. Okay. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Rishikesh Bhagat from Kotak Mutual Funds. Please go ahead, sir. 
Hi, good evening, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, just uh, two questions. First, if you can help me understand this drop in quarterly run rate of member addition. In last four five quarters, it has been steadily upward of four thousand plus every quarter. This quarter, it has been lower than four thousand. So, is there some change in strategy in terms of member acquisition? Uh, Rishikesh, I just answered that question oh, in great sorry. detail. Uh, so, uh, I'll just give you key highlights. What we said is we did three things. Uh, we we looked at uh, our current product offerings and, and looked at uh, in terms of if we had to improve on average AUR, which mm -hmm. products uh, are the ones we should look at in terms of focus and defocus. Second, we said that uh, I think we overlaid something on down payments and what what has been the uh, history around that and what where can we look at that and the third thing we did was uh, I think there were certain offers in the past which were throwing in certain uh, incentives uh, which which we re-looked at again uh, when we were looking at the strategy and hence uh, I think uh, what I mentioned was that obviously has had some impact because it's the first quarter of change uh, I, I also said that it will stabilize in quarter okay. two and, and we'll have to measure then from then on because these are changes which take some time to percolate. Okay, okay, and that's uh, helpful and apologies for asking that question. And the second question is, uh, when I look at your resort income, apparently uh, I think last few quarters it has been growing at a fairly healthy run rate and this quarter obviously I, on absolute basis it's uh, reasonably strong but clearly the growth here seems to have lowered at 2% only. So just want your sense in the sense, is there that ability to probably uh, uh, optimize that uh, has been hit a limit or in terms of resort income or do you think we still have levers on increasing that? Uh, so, two, so two parts, right? So one is, you're right, if I look at the standalone numbers, it's about 2%. But uh, I think uh, if I look at including some of the Indian subsidiaries because what uh, some the new some of the new rooms have been added in subsidiaries. Okay. So so then it is four and a half percent. Uh, are we happy with four and a half? No, I think uh, there is a lot to do. Uh, I think the the way to look at it is that uh, this this number should be uh, in my mind uh, at least uh, the base inflation plus uh, volume growth. So I think we are well short of our own expectations on this. Uh, as we look at this, I think what are the drivers here, right? So the drivers here are, of course, what sort of experiences we can create which are differentiated in F&B. What are the other things in terms of offerings, whether it is the spa, whether it is things like uh, what we do in happy home, uh, and also look at various activities in the resorts. So uh, we already have a program in place where <coughs> we are looking at how do we enhance this Further. But the right number in my mind to look at is four and a half percent, not two uh, percent or whatever is the reported number. Okay. Okay. Oh, but, uh, but just uh, you feel that there are still levers to uh, increase it, or do you think that probably somewhere uh, potential there could be resistance from the members in terms of not uh, actual resistance, but just that do you think that purchasing power could get limit uh, hit limit? In so, no, no. I think I think the way to look at it is uh, let me let me expand a bit on that, Rishikesh. So so and I'll I'll take it with an example. Uh, so uh, in in one of our resorts and it's in Varka. We have opened a new restaurant called Flavor Boat, right? Now, okay. Flavor Boat is a restaurant which opens, I think, about 10:30, uh, 11, just after breakfast, and it is not offering full meals. It is offering small bites because that's where the market is moving towards. Uh, so, so what was happening is the way to think of it is it's not about increasing the prices or anything from the same member, right? Okay. It's that capturing. Uh, those members who are not participating in in this case F and B, and how do you do that? You offer them options because they are definitely going to spend now whether they spend in resort or outside, and then how do you make sure that they spend in resort? And then you follow the pattern of what kind of food offering we don't have, and then can we offer that in a manner which which from a timing perspective, from a, a you know, meal size perspective, because all of these are preferences which are 
very varied in our resorts uh, because in our resorts we have people who take the entire three meal package we have people who just prefer uh, small small leaves so i think that's the way to think of it that uh, we will have to create these various things so that was a pilot we have done in varka uh, and if that is successful i think we will try and replicate it across uh, the other thing is uh, of course things like chart corners etc so i'm just giving an example and sure, the thought sure. process it's not about it's not about really uh, uh-huh. increasing the price and all of that right okay. so okay yeah and uh, just uh, lastly i am not sure whether you answered uh, say for uh, 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 okay i will get back into that forgot the question sorry apologies no problem thank you rishikesh thank you a next question is from the line of nimesh shah from mk investment managers limited please go ahead sir yeah uh, thanks for this opportunity uh, so uh, just again coming back to the member addition question so i understand the product rationalization that you are doing uh, might hamper the member addition in the near term or for the say next uh, two three quarters but want to understand just on a, a medium to long term perspective uh, uh, do we stick to the member addition target which will be in sync with our inventory addition maintaining the member to room ratio or now on we will just uh, fo- focusing more on the aur So, if you could just highlight your uh, medium to long term target uh, there. Uh, so, Nimesh, I, I think we will come back with a view uh, uh, on because I think there's a lot of work, a lot of work uh, going on in terms of uh, the model. Uh, I think it is a great model which has brought us to this position of strength. But as we look at the changing environment, I think what do we need to change uh, in terms of the model? So, uh, so in my mind, as I said. inventory uh, is the key so that's something we are we are continuing to p- focus on uh, in my mind uh, uh, i think the question is how do we bring down the 56 members per room because i think uh, we need to uh, bring that down bring uh, the kind of uh, occupancy down to a level which is uh, more manageable and so that there is more availability for members uh, uh, the last question you are asking is uh is the focus on quality going to continue of course i think uh, to me uh, that is of prime importance i think uh, uh who we are targeting what products uh, and what what does that mean because i think uh, in uh, in a lot of ways uh, i think one of the things we are trying to do is are we targeting the right customer with the right product are we underselling to certain customers Uh, uh and how do we bring that intelligence how do we manage that lead how do we curate leads how do we gain uh, uh really insight into what the customer wants i think that's a journey which will take two to three quarters uh so uh, so to me I, i don't know whether that answers your question but that's the quick thought and we will expand a lot more as we have gone through the journey over the next three to four months got it so uh, just on the occupancy so according to you what would be the right occupancy which is manageable uh, some sense on that uh, at this point as i said we are still working through it but uh, see if you look at our average occupancy is about 85% uh, uh, and uh, with uh, with that i think uh, uh, i think we are up there so my my sense is it will be below that 85% mark now how much it will be we we'll have to see but that's a directional statement i think as i said i think uh, we are working through what what are the models uh, which will get us there so from my perspective the important thing here is uh, quality uh, in terms of what what we uh, bring to the table in terms of our customer base and then to that customer base how do we deliver superior customer service from all perspectives from a booking perspective from a in resort experience and a post post resort engagement i think all all three buckets got that and just lastly uh, again on the uh, aur front so should we now kind of assume that uh, in, uh, going forward the aur will range around this 4.9 uh, number or uh, maybe plus minus but uh, largely around this number uh nimesh it's been only two months for me in the job give me give yeah. me some more time and i will answer that question yeah 
Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sagar Tanna from Ikneme Ventures. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, sir. You, I know you've recently taken over, and it's as you rightly mentioned, it's just been two months. But any early thoughts in terms of strategy or anything that you would like to change going forward, both on the qualitative front and on the quantitative front? So, Sagar, uh, I, I think as I mentioned to uh, Nimesh earlier, I think we will come back with the clarity on this maybe three to four months. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm requesting. But let me give you some early thoughts on uh, uh, at least my my views, right? So one is uh, first, if I bucket the strengths, right? Uh, I think from a family holiday experience, I think there is no beating us. From an in resort experience, there is no beating us. Uh, and and I think that's something which comes out in every survey we do, right? So so that's one. Secondly, from a direction perspective. Uh, and uh, all of you are aware, I think uh, uh, one of the things which has been pointed out is how do we make the booking process fairly easy? Uh, and that's something we are focusing on. So to me, inventory addition remains unchanged. Uh, so that's the third element. And then the fourth and fifth element is really, I think they started the journey in terms of how do we look at uh, uh, from a sales process, uh, how do we look at potential customers? And then how do we make sure that we are selling the right requirement for their needs and then use, use that to then actually provide better service through their journey. And I, I'm being very generic here because as, uh, as I said, I think more specifics will come later. So to me, the journey around inventory addition continues, the journey around superior customer service at, at the resort continues. And, and we look at other elements of the model and come back. Sure. Uh, second question, sir, is on uh, our European business. You know, it's very niche geography. And uh, would you think it's appropriate considering the boom in domestic uh, tourism? Would you want to allocate capital and management resources in continuing that? Or would you want to rethink with an open mind? Uh, so on Holiday Club, I think, uh, first of all, uh, uh, my my own sense is that, uh, as I mentioned in the opening speech, that uh, uh, to a large extent, I think the business is stabilizing uh, because it was going through a series of shock. Uh, it was running as historically at 12% EBITDA. And then because of COVID, because of some uh, the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, revenues were 160 million at that point. And of course, it's down to 140 odd million now. So I think there are multiple things going on there. Uh, but uh, from my perspective, uh, early days for me to take a call. Uh, uh, as with all things, uh, I come with most things with an open mind. So uh, I'm, I'm not close to any possibilities, but uh, too early to uh, decide. So the way I look at it is from my perspective, uh, the team is very, the management team there is very focused on operating metrics very focused on the need to think of alternatives to uh, the revenue loss because of uh, the Russia-Ukraine war. And I think we are looking at uh, potentially, if, if, if I, I mentioned that uh, in Q1, we saw 34% growth in uh, 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 timeshare sales. So, so definitely some parts of the, uh, some parts of the business are showing some green shoots, but that, uh, as I said, I think I would take two, two or three quarters more to come back with a detailed plan on HCRO. Good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Senzil from I thought PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, just one question. Uh, so, similar to MNDAM, uh, where we had uh, clear key metrics like uh, uh, revenue growth and ROE of uh, more than 18 percent. So are we planning to have the same kind of uh, revenue metrics in uh, uh, again the holidays too? And uh, if you can share it, uh, uh, it will be great. Uh, 
until that uh, we hope to get to a clear set of uh, strategic uh, initiatives and metrics uh, as we go through the uh, rethink process and as i said that will be probably around four months away is my my feel and that's when we'll come back with it uh, right now i think uh, uh, i think it is about uh, sharpening the focus on a few things so one of the first things we have started off with is is looking at some of the product mix uh, from a current product mix i think we will look at other things but from a direction perspective i think give us four months uh, and i i know exactly what you're talking about uh, from a m&m perspective how we did it so i think we are going to approach it very methodically here also uh better yeah that's it Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Himanshu Shah from Dolat Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions, sir. Uh, one is uh, the retirees of member has been on a higher side last financial year and even in this particular quarter. So is this the new normal around thousand members? Last year was also around four thousand member retirees. This quarter was around thousand members. Can you provide some color on this side? So Himanshu, uh, uh, I think uh, from our perspective, the retire number will go up. uh this year it's not uh, 1000 is not the uh, right run rate if i look at this year uh now uh so from my perspective uh uh i think uh, uh the way to look at it is that there are members retiring but then there are options to sell back to them uh but the baseline in my mind should be higher than uh, the 1000 per quarter uh probably i would from a budgeting perspective probably take uh, closer to 12 to 1300 uh, as a quarterly average okay so this is a shorter tenure members which we sold couple of years back uh, which are getting retired or this yeah, are even the... also there so that will also come in uh, so which is which is where it goes back to some of the comments i made that we are looking at all the products and looking at Uh, because many of these are ending the tenure and we are looking at behavior of customers during the tenure and then looking at what products tweaks to make uh, which is part of that journey right so but this does include that also okay. and so maybe for coming in coming couple of years this trend will keep inching upwards or this will be only specific to this year or when for the forthcoming next couple of years the winner would be the trend Two to three years, it will stabilize, uh, uh, so it won't be uh, increasing beyond that. And I'm giving you indicative numbers. Uh, obviously, it could be plus minus here or there. Yes, yeah, sir. Secondly, on the inventory addition target which we are having by FY30, so is that uh, the target for operational inventory or both? It would include operational plus pipeline inventory. Uh. so pipeline inventory uh, when you say pipeline it is not active or is it active i think that when basically you... basically the by pipeline i mean which is not operational not available for member it may be active but not available for member okay so in my definition there are two things so let me uh, at least clarify my definition right so if the resort is live uh, that is operational except for room set aside for maintenance right yeah. uh, so so in that definition that's what i meant so with the growth also we will try and be at that 85% number sorry 85% 85% number occupancy with oh. with the enhanced inventory that's our goal but but sir, the enhanced inventory target is of operational or, or live inventory or including the one where the project has got commenced but uh, the resort has not gone live no we can't use the inventory if the resort is not live so i am not understanding the question himanshu so yeah. uh, let me try and do yep you fundamentally re- referring to the operational inventory only and we are not referring to inventory which is not live not operational not released to the members 
ओके सो बाय एफ आई थर्टी द टारगेट फॉर टेन थाउजेंड इन्वेंट्री फॉर ऑपरेशनल इन्वेंट्री Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, sorry. If that was a question, ten uh, thousand rooms live and available to members. Okay. And lastly, sir, uh, we are looking at accelerated room additions. Simultaneously, we are looking to bring down the the member to room ratio, which would mean the incremental member to room ratio on the incremental rooms would be on a lower side. So on and which would indirectly imply lower revenue growth and simultaneously higher cost. So how do we plan to manage or balance this out from a growth trajectory perspective? So I think uh, two or three things. Uh, so from my perspective if you look at it i think uh, uh, there are two parts to this equation i think one is the revenue side as you correctly pointed out and second is the profit side uh, i think on the revenue side as i mentioned i think uh, i do feel that uh, uh, from a share of wallet capture we are not capturing enough in terms of the thing the second is uh, and, and i did clarify that our intent would be to bring down the member room ratio from 56 I didn't say what is the target because that's the one we are working, work, doing work in progress in terms of what should it be. Uh, the idea being, we'll improve uh, probably uh, availability of rooms, and then uh, probably then we create a product which uh, then is uh, from a perspective of uh, uh, sales cost and offers. We will start getting some benefits there. So I think that's our thought process. uh but uh, you are right if you just do incremental and incremental uh, the the new additions might come at below uh, 52 weeks uh, 52 members a room yeah so yeah. and last thing some guidance possible on the gross membership sales value for the financial year uh i don't think we have ever split that and uh, because that's not the right metric right himanshu see ultimately uh, i mean i i'm only being going to service people who are active with me so measuring a mem- uh, number which is gross is probably not the right thing to do so uh, i was meaning the sales value target number or some color possible on that side including upgrades so uh, himanshu from our perspective and if you look at the long term financial perspective what matters really is the net sales because that really flows through all financials including cash and uh, therefore gross number is something which we did, don't want to really track or discuss they do as you know any other business or industry there are follow ups which happen here also it happens but do, doesn't really matter the lead indicator for us is the net sales which we are recording and reporting right sir that's it from my side thank you and all the best thank you imran Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Ankit from SmartSense Services. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you for my uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I have been a uh, investor in the company for last ten years, and I'm. Really appreciate the kind of business model we have, specifically in our domestic business. And I don't have any questions. Uh, uh, I just have one concern, uh, which I think nobody has asked till now in the call, and I've been asking this repeated times uh, to the previous management also. And since we have a new management now with new CMB and new uh, CFO, this is my request. Uh, see, CRO investment we made in 2016, and if I am not wrong, it was roughly around 600 crores. And after eight years, we have uh, hardly generated any returns or uh, the cash flows on that. So, and as we are on track of attending, uh, achieving a very sizable capex in the long term, uh, don't you think it's a good option to at least explore getting out of it and focusing only on the domestic business, which is doing fantastically well, where we have very strong footing and we can. So I may step up the gap in the opening remarks. We said that initially we are looking for um, internal approval, and uh, so we will have to go for debt uh, when we scale up our equity, uh, scale up our uh, uh, capex. Uh, if we get this fund ready for uh, our uh, domestic business, probably we will not need uh, uh, debt because then uh, our uh, 
recurring cash flow generation in our domestic business will be good enough for our acquisition uh, for our capex going forward just this uh, one concern and one uh, question from my side thank you so much ankit it's a, it's a very good question uh, number one uh, so so I, i'll separate the two right in a way they are connected but they are not connected so uh, so from my perspective uh, uh, the domestic business uh, obviously has a cash balance and has a strong uh, 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 kind of cash flow generation and that's something which we'll expect to continue now coming to hcro uh, i think if i look at the hcro journey you're right we invested some money and i think i spent time on one of the answers in, in terms of the journey but but the reality is that you know uh, uh, i think it is not it is stabilizing it is probably not going to need cash is what our view is but uh, if you go back to uh, and the group has used this model there's category a b and c right so category a was like strategic we want to keep it category b is there is a turn around and we should think of it and then there's category c which we definitely don't think we should be in my my sense is that uh, uh, hcro today is in category b where i think uh, the series of uh, uh, you know series of covid related issues as well as the russia war i think it's all happened in the bunch of 2 to 3 years so i think from a bottom of the cycle kind of uh, place uh, i think we should not probably jump quickly to conclusions uh, you might have uh, obviously had a 10 year view and so you are better informed but from my perspective that's what i said in one of the previous answers we will take 2 to 3 quarters we are working very closely with the management team and then we'll come back with answers on that but completely take your point understand your perspective thank you so much sir that that really helps thank you so much and all the best for the future thank you thank you the next question is from the line of vikas vasturi from focus capital please go ahead uh hello sir uh <clears throat> sir i was probably one of the first to get into the queue because as soon as you started your commentary i pressed star and one but the moderator has given me a chance to speak only towards the end of the call uh so i had the same question as the previous participant sir and uh, so please excuse me for repeating it so uh for the, probably for the first i have been a shareholder to uh, in the company for many years now and uh, uh probably for the first time we have a sort of a unique uh, situation or unique opportunity where uh, we have a new incoming chairman new incoming ceo and a new uh, and almost a new incoming uh, cfo right so i hope uh, there is going to be a fresh perspective uh into the hcro investment um uh, similar to what the previous participants spoke about right sir and um, uh if you just think about the even even if you take the return on capital of the years prior to covid it was not as great as what uh, your domestic india business is generating today so it's like you know you have a wonderful winning horse in india uh, and uh, sort of a a lame horse and you are like tying them both together and you, you know the outcome is not that great so uh, my request to you sir as uh, and as a shareholder it hurts me because um, uh, the return on capital on the the, the hcr of business is not great um, so if you could uh, please rethink that uh, uh, re look at it uh, that would be of great interest to me sir i just wanted to place before this even though it's a sort of a repetition of the previous question i just wanted to uh, impress upon you sir thank you very much for the opportunity so vikas i think uh, first of all apologies for that we'll get it checked why you came in early and you couldn't uh, get in first in the queue but uh, uh, again uh, very good inputs uh, uh, and i have nothing to add to my previous answer unfortunately but clearly hear you clearly and uh, and thank you for your long term support on the stock thank you sir and wish you all the best in your new role thank you thank you so much thank you our next question is from the line of rishikesh bhavat mm-hmm. from kotak mutual fund please go ahead uh, is there any thought of at least uh, uh repaying debt at the hcro level 
because apparently the higher interest rate in euro regions apparently has also hit the cash flow uh, uh, profitability there obviously weak environment is there but that's something any thought on that for uh so rishikesh i i think uh, uh, in line with uh, what i've said to the previous one i think uh, previous questions on this see i ultimately the way i am thinking of it is that uh, hcro should make cash positive profits and try to repay the debt number one right so that's at the hcro level right then we go to a level above in terms of debt we have taken for the acquisition there obviously there are strategies to think about uh, and we are probably thinking of a structure where where it optimizes interest cost overall for the company uh, that's something which we might go ahead and implement but fundamentally the question is one of you know uh, how does the business improve its performance and what are the revenue streams we have to add so while we'll do short term kind of uh, things on optimization on uh the overall outflow in terms of the debt cost i i i think uh, uh the main focus is on trying to see how hcro performs yeah. uh, and that's that's really how we are thinking about it right now thank you thank you thank thank you our next question is from the line of manit swala an individual investor please go ahead uh hello hi sir uh uh just uh, had a question uh, uh i think so by now we will have a lot of our uh, earlier 25 year memberships which will be closing so do we track any uh your metrics wherein that there have been renewals of this particular membership and uh, secondly i uh, just wanted to know that uh, we are targeting a 10000 room inventory uh is there a particular number in mind with visa we that when we achieve that 10000 room inventory uh how much would be the net member count which we are looking at currently i think so it is around 3 lakhs and just la one last question uh do we have any corporate partnerships or is there any uh b2b kind of a, uh, you know arrangement wherein we probably provide uh, corporates uh with you know uh of some kind of a different kind of a membership for their employees or is there a revenue is there an avenue we are exploring thank you very much so let me pick the second question first so uh, so clearly uh, we do have a corporate offering and it's called corporate fund days where what it does is uh, companies can buy a pool of days and offer it to their employees as benefits uh, uh that program i think uh, because of covid and other reasons i think it was on the back burner i think that's what we are reviving right now in terms of uh, uh, and in fact we have put an organization again in place to focus a lot on this the second element of that program is how do we then address needs of the employees of such corporates and last is how do we plug into their own rewards and recognition programs and so on and so forth where uh i think clearly uh, we have a lot to offer uh, in terms of uh, it could be just an example of uh, best uh, employee or best sales person those kind of awards so i think we have a multi layered program which we are doing uh, uh as i said it is probably off. during the covid time etc it was not probably uh, focused upon so much and as we have come out now fully i think we are focusing back on it uh does that cover your question dwani uh, should i move to the one yes yes it, is, it does cover it is so some light on where we are planning to at least revive uh, that programs yeah uh, I, on your first question i think the uh, I, and i think i mentioned it in one of the earlier answers retirement uh, has not been a big element overall for us and as it becomes bigger i think we are putting a program to track and we are already currently tracking but making a more focused program on tracking how we can retain uh now so uh, and uh, in my mind so for example if somebody has taken a membership 25 or 33 or also there i think the the question in our mind is i think obviously that person might have passed uh, two life stages in terms of uh of i as we think of our member profile so so i think 
the question is whether we should tap the family then or sell it to the same person. Those are the, some of the details. The short tenure is a very different thing. I think you asked about the long tenure, but on the short tenure, I think it's more of a conventional kind of viewpoint on uh, what do we offer, and that's where I said in one of my previous answers that we are looking at that program and saying what what really happened because it's one of those programs which the tenure has ended and we have the complete data and how do we position that program going forward? Okay, understood. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I had uh, just I had a follow up. So. Uh, just wanted to know that. Uh, so uh, uh, I had asked another question uh, with regards to where we are seeing uh, our uh, member number uh, when we achieve a 10,000 room inventory. So do we have any objective on that? Because we have been saying since after we achieved 5,000 room inventory, we have been looking at mission 10,000. So is there any number which goes along with that? Uh, 10,000 number which we are looking at. Uh, so I, I don't think we have put out a number in the public domain. So, uh, but uh, in line with some of the previous answers, uh, I think it will not exactly double. It will be lower than double. Uh, uh, and so that's that's the only thing I can tell you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question for the day. I now end the conference to Mr. Manoj Bhatt for closing comments. So thank you everyone for joining the call. Uh, and if there are any unanswered questions, uh, I don't think there are. But if we please do write to us and we'll get it answered. Uh, and uh, as usual, uh, I think welcome, welcome the ideas, welcome the questions, welcome the feedback, and look forward to interacting with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you mm -hmm. for joining us, and you may now disconnect your.